I just installed a brand new sprinkler system that's gonna save me money in the long run. If you wanna learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let's get started. I have a backyard that I've put a lot of time and energy into, but as you can see, it has seen better days because I've neglected it for years due to the fact that when we first got our dog Kona, he decided to start ripping apart our sprinkler system and I never fixed it. But now that I have kids and actually want to use the backyard for enjoyment purposes, we need to make sure that we have a strong enough sprinkler system that can hold up to Kona, as well as one that's going to save me money in the long run. The sprinkler system that we're using on this project is from Irigreen, and it's gotta be one of the most precise irrigation systems ever designed. More on that later on in the video. The first step of determining whether or not you can install a heavy duty sprinkler system is to make sure you have the proper water pressure. You should be able to fill up a five gallon bucket within 45 seconds, which I can, or make sure you have at least 40 PSI. This is the only hose bed that I have in this entire backyard. And unfortunately, I did pour a concrete patio years ago, which is gonna get in the way if you already have an existing concrete patio. Hopefully you don't on your project, but on ours, luckily for us, I did put in a one inch PVC pipe to pipe the existing sprinkler system into the backyard. I'm gonna take out this pipe and try and still salvage this one inch so I don't have to actually try and dig underneath this concrete patio. And hopefully on your project, you don't have to worry about this, but on mine, it's the situation. The ear green system already requires a one inch PVC pipe, which was very lucky in this circumstance and I already had it installed. And as you can see, removing the old sprinkler system was quite easy. It just needed a bit of a cleanup. Now that I know for certain I can start using this one inch PVC pipe, it's time to do some layout for the sprinkler heads and where they need to be positioned in order to have proper coverage over the entire yard. Guys, gonna measure out how far we have over here to the other side of the yard. We've got 45, 45, almost six inches. Thank you, sweetie. Sprinkler head placement is always very important because you want to make sure that no matter where you place it, the sprinkler is going to be able to reach. The main contributing factor that you have to think about is how much PSI your house has. If you have significant water pressure, you can throw up to 35 feet, but if you have lower water pressure, you can only throw up to 25 feet. You have to really keep that in mind when trying to lay out your sprinkler heads. The extremely nice thing about the Aerogreen system is that before you even purchase the system, you can go onto their website and pinpoint exactly how many sprinkler heads you're gonna need on your project. On ours, I was almost able to get away with one sprinkler head, but two was gonna be needed for the size of yard that I had. Now that I know where my two sprinkler heads are gonna be placed, I can start trenching. Now I do wanna salvage as much grass as I possibly can, even if it's rough looking grass. So in order to do so, I grab a trenching shovel as well as a flat headed shovel, remove and peel back all the grass that I possibly can while still salvaging the root structure and then start trenching away. Now I did have to recently dig over 21 inches deep into the front yard in order to install a new main water line that's under the frost line. But in this circumstance, we don't have to worry about that because we're gonna have the ability to winterize this line with compressed air. That's why the majority of this trench is approximately eight to 12 inches deep. And as someone who personally knows how much harder it is to dig 24 inches than 12 inches, you will be rest assured and thankful that you don't have to dig that deep. For this project, you definitely want a PVC pipe cutter, which will make life a lot easier when cutting pipes, especially in awkward areas. When it comes time to installing all of our elbows and tees to our PVC pipe, I'm using OD. Now this is a two part OD mix. The purple product is actually a primer that you apply to your PVC pipe as well as your connection fitting. You let it dry for a couple seconds and then start applying your adhesive to both sides. Once both sides are fully applied, you then squeeze them together and you have a permanently watertight bond that's perfect for PVC pipe. I would suggest holding on to the connection or the pipe just for 10 to 15 seconds to make sure it doesn't move on you during the drying process. But that's how fast this product actually adheres because within 10 to 15 seconds, it's seemingly permanently bonded. 
The first connection I made there was a one inch T that then teed off into a one inch PVC pipe that I then connected a 45 degree elbow to. There are 90 degree elbows obviously, but a 45 was gonna give me a better transition to where I wanted our sprinkler head to be placed. Once that side was taken care of, I then worked my way to the opposite side of the T and adhered another 10 foot length of PVC pipe. Unfortunately, that wasn't long enough to get to where I needed to be, so I had a transition coupler that connected one straight pipe to another straight pipe to make the full transition. With our PVC pipe fully installed, I can now transition my efforts to the sprinkler heads. This project really evolves around this guy. This is Irigreen, and this is a smart sprinkler system, which is amazing because it calculates exactly the shape of your yard, so there's zero wasted water. Plus, I'll have to install two of these for this entire yard, so that will definitely save my back as far as trenching goes, and will save a lot of water in the long run because it also accounts for weather, which we get plenty of rain in Seattle. Once you determine exactly where you want the sprinkler head to be placed, you need to make sure you excavate that area down to a depth of 13 inches, which will give you the right amount of depth for the overall height of your sprinkler head. Now that we have the proper depth, it's now time for the transition between our PVC pipe to our sprinkler head. And that is actually made extremely easy thanks to the ear green kit system that comes with this 15 inch long flex pipe. There's a one inch male end thread adapter on one side that I apply plumber's tape to and then connect that to a one inch female end adapter. Now there's only threads on one side of that female end and the other side we can install our standard OD purple primer and adhesive to to secure this pipe in place. We apply the same technique to every single sprinkler head, so in this case we only have two, so we only have two locations to do it, but once that's taken care of, we actually don't want to install our sprinkler head as of right now because we want to make sure we flush out the system first. So let's get to the other side. Again, hopefully you don't have to cut into your concrete, but on our application we do, and it's actually quite fairly easy as long as you have the right tools to do so. I want as clean of a look as possible, which is why I'm taking a circular saw with a segmented diamond blade and scoring the edge of the concrete. This concrete slab is over four inches thick, so there's no way this saw blade is gonna get all the way through, but at least I can have a nice crisp edge at the very top that you can see, and then once everything is in place, I can backfill it with concrete. Just make sure you have a proper respirator when doing this because you don't want any of this dust in your lungs. Once I have two sides cut as deep as possible, I then grab my Bosch hammer drill and start jackhammering away all this concrete. It does take a little bit of time to do so, but the proper tools makes this process a lot faster. And this probably took me about an hour to get this entire section out, which was plenty worth it when it comes time to installing all of our pipe. And just like any of my videos, if there are tools or materials seen in this video that you want to purchase, I'll make sure and leave a link for in the description box below. The circular saw can only get so far, so in order to get it cut as close to the house as possible, I take my grinder with a diamond blade and score the concrete as much as possible. Once that's taken care of, I then jackhammer the rest of the concrete out and start excavating the soil down to the existing pipe. Now I'm not a plumber, which is why this took me days to figure out to make sure it's properly done in order to showcase you how I properly did it. So we have brass coming out, this direction down into our backfill prevention, then going into our PVC pipe. Now I'm gonna go into detail on every single piece of these later, but just know that I'm not applying any thread or putty first in order to make sure that this all fits together, and then I'll go through and actually put it all together so it's cohesive all the way down the line, and I can be rest assured that's gonna fit properly. So, let's get it installed. In order to properly connect all these pieces together without any leaks the very first time, I'm using plumber's tape as well as sealant. Now the sealant and plumber's tape should be applied together if it's going to metal to metal. But if it's a PVC piece, then you wanna make sure you're just using the tape. The connection you see here is a one inch T that also has a female three quarter inch. And the three quarter inch end is gonna be connected to a 90 degree elbow. Now this 90 degree elbow is gonna be connected to a fitting which will allow me to winterize this entire system. 
but it comes with a key and I'm able to connect this unit to my air compressor, which will push the remaining water out of the pipes once it comes time for winter. This did get a little messy, so make sure you have something to wipe all the excess off, as well as put on some gloves while you're at it. I now am applying our same PVC adhesive to the mix and attaching our T connection to our underground one inch pipe. Once dry, I then apply our primer adhesive to the opposite side and install a small section of one inch pipe, which will then feed into our backflow prevention. But in order to connect our PVC pipe to our backflow preventer, I have to install this adapter. This adapter has a male threaded end on one side and a smooth female end on the other. On the opposite side of our backflow prevention, I have to install a 90 degree elbow. This elbow has a male end that is going into our backflow preventer and then a female end that's gonna be pointed upwards. In order to have the ability to remove this entire system without cutting it, I'm installing this union fitting that's gonna be on the vertical pipe surface. With all these brass to brass connection points, I'm applying plumber's tape first and then applying sealant to that as well, just to guarantee that we're not gonna have any leaks along the way. A three quarter inch brass coupler is connected to the opposite side because I'm connecting three 12 inch pieces of brass together. If you can find longer pieces, great, but in this application, in my circumstance, this is as long as I could get it. I'm now connecting our vertical pipe to our backflow preventer, and once that's fully secured, it's time to install. I apply my PVC primer and adhesive to both sides, fit it snugly into place, and then make sure that it's positioned with a little bit of support on the bottom side. With that accounted for, it's now time to remove our hose bib. Just make sure you turn off the water first and twist the hose bib off in a counterclockwise motion. Now I did know this was threaded on, but just be well aware that some of these are not threaded like this. The pipe that was existing here was approximately eight inches long and I needed something a little bit bigger, but I couldn't find any brass between six to 12 inches. So I had to go with a galvanized 10 inch long piece. I installed a brass 3 quarter inch T to our galvanized pipe and then installed a male end spigot connection to the opposite side of the T. Once all these pieces were fully tightened down in the right direction, I then proceeded to install a 90 degree elbow, but this 90 degree elbow had a male end on one side and a female end on the other. The male end went into our 3 quarter inch T that we just installed, and once that's fully secured and pointed in the right direction, I actually apply an escutcheon to the back side of our galvanized pipe. This escutcheon has a rubber collar, which will make sure and prevent any type of moisture as well as insects to be able to get into this hole. Once plumber's tape and sealant is applied to our threads, I can then reinstall our spigot and start installing the rest of our pipe. In order to have an easy way to turn on and off the water to our irrigation system, I want to make sure I have a shutoff valve. And in order to make sure this entire system fits properly, I have to attach four inch long pipe on both sides of our shutoff valve. I install a 90 degree elbow on one side of this pipe. And once that's fully tightened down, I can install that on our existing spigot. As you can see, this is a lot of work just to get water to your backyard for an irrigation system. But in my personal mindset, it's worth the extra effort. And if you're able to do this in a different way that's easier on your project, please do so. Before I install the entire system together, I have to install a valve box. But in this certain application, I can't just install a normal valve box, of course, because of where it's located. So I have to cut and shape the valve box that I have to fit this space. It actually wasn't very hard and it's pretty straightforward, but just keep that in mind on your project. Once I like the positioning, I can then install the last and final piece of pipe. Now this is another 12 inch long piece of pipe that has the other side of the union attached to it. I maneuver the union perfectly into each other and then tighten it down properly. This is the last and final piece needed for this entire puzzle, so I'm very excited to turn on the water and see if we have any leaks. Definitely got water pressure coming out here. I have a stop here, so if I turn this on, I don't see any leaks whatsoever. That's what you want to see. That's what you want to see, baby. Woo! Took a while, but we got it. <laughs> oh, even Cody wants to say hi. Yeah, Cody, we did it! We did it! Yes, we did it! Thank you! 
as you can see, I was quite happy with the fact that we got to this point with zero leaks, and now we can flush out our entire system. All I had to do was turn on the water and make sure that all the valves were pointing in the right direction, and I actually had this flush out for approximately three minutes, just to make sure and guarantee ourselves that any gunk that found its way into our pipes was now out of our pipes. We can now get to one of the easiest parts of this entire project, which was installing our Irigreen sprinkler heads. All we had to do was screw it in place and we don't even need plumber's tape at this application. They actually advise not to apply plumber's tape because they have a gasket inside the sprinkler head. In order to turn on this amazing sprinkler system, we do need to attach it to the Irigreen Wi-Fi cloud controller. I pre-drill a hole on the same wall our spigot is located and that will determine exactly where I want our controller to be placed. I remove one of the attachment brackets on the back side of the controller and then position that exactly where I want it on the wall. Then I'm able to level that out appropriately and fit the box snugly as needed. In order to drill as small of a hole as possible through the house, I actually remove the screws that are holding our plug and play service cables and remove that cable on the left side. That way I'm able to go outside with that end of the cable, apply a piece of painter's tape to the back side of our drill bit, and then push that drill bit straight through with our cables. Then just reinstall the cable into your control box and away you go. These cables come 50 feet long, which is plenty of length for our installation purposes. I just need to make sure it's tucked nice and tight under our siding in order to make sure that's never a tripping hazard. Once the cable meets the grass, I did trench out a small section in order to bury this cable into the ground, and as I feed our wire to our very first head, it's time to install. The service cable has a black end to it, and you take off the red end that's going to be connected to your sprinkler head. Once those are plugged into each other, you then take the cable lock and attach the top bracket with the bottom bracket. The lock just provides added support to make sure that these pieces don't come apart, and now that those pieces are installed, we can install the second cable. The second cable is attached to the pigtail that's going to the very first sprinkler head, and then you can run the second plug and play cable to your second sprinkler head. As you can see here, when I did plug this cable into the sprinkler head for the very first time, I actually didn't have it connected. That was a mistake because once you start screwing this in, the cables will bind up on you. So I do strongly suggest installing your sprinkler head first and then plug in your cables. Simply put, less kinks along the way. Now that we have our two sprinkler heads fully installed, it's time to install our six inch valve box. And you might be asking yourself, is this really necessary? Well, I do think it is because it helps protect the cable connections, but it also helps hold any of the excess cable length, which is always nice to have if anything needs to be maneuvered over time. Once everything is positioned correctly, I then backfill with soil. And remember that this doesn't have to be visible. This valve box can be buried just a mere couple inches under the soil, and that way it's never an eyesore. As for the sprinkler head, the head itself should be about a half inch above grade. That way you can feel confident this head will never be buried with soil, but you're not going to be too high where the lawnmower is going to hit it. With the Irigreen system, you do have to download the app, which is actually quite straightforward and easy to install. The only thing is, is that you have to connect it to your Wi-Fi router, but once you have that connected and calibrated correctly, you can start laying out the sprinkler system and where you want it to spray. That's where the genius of this system comes into play. By adding points on the app, you're able to literally maneuver the sprinkler head in all different directions with a 360 degree rotation. Based upon my water pressure, I'm able to go all the way to 30 feet long, and I'm able to maneuver around my patios, my retaining wall, my deck, and so forth, which is very impressive because I have such a unique backyard. Once I have everything laid out on the app the way I want it, I feel comfortable enough to backfill our trench. In order to backfill it properly, you do want to compact the soil just to make sure you don't have any odd dips and valleys along the way as the soil solidifies over time. You can do this with just your body weight, but I do suggest grabbing a hand tamper and tamping down the soil and grass significantly once you have it in place. But with the dirt and grass fully reinstalled, we are done with this amazing sprinkler system. I'm truly amazed by innovation these days, and the fact of the matter is, is that a normal sprinkler system just hasn't changed for decades and decades. But with this incredible Irigreen system, it completely transforms my thought process on how a sprinkler system should react to your specific yard no matter what your layout is. 
Huge thank you to Eargreen for sponsoring this week's video, and if you want one free sprinkler head, then please type out the promo code BYOT at checkout. The link, of course, is in the description box below. And with that said, I am truly proud to say this is one beautiful, sexy beast of a sprinkler system. Oh yeah.